Singapore becomes a super aged society, our healthcare system now needs to undergo a major transformation. It is not just expanding, that may be the easier part, but reconfiguring it, focusing on value-based care, at the same time shifting its gravity away from acute hospitals into the community on preventive care. And so healthcare settings will no longer just be clinics and hospitals. It will be homes, it will be in the community. It is well recognised that major healthcare transformations are undergirded by a few drivers. This is in the international literature. First, you need an effective organisational structure, of which we have done through three clusters, three public health clusters, each with a good critical mass of residents of about 1.5 million each. Second, you need the right funding system which incentivizes desired behavior, of which we have developed the capitation model from this financial year. I shouldn't say we have developed, it's been around, but we have implemented capitation model from this financial year. Third, a strong mindset for preventive care and the building of health and not just curing of sickness, of which we have implemented healthier SG. And fourth, we need the right IT systems to integrate all health providers. We were fortunate that we have had IHIS for the past 15 years. IHIS's work will therefore remain central and fundamental to our healthcare transformation moving forward. So it has its work cut out. And today let me focus on priorities of IHIS that will be of strategic importance to Singapore's healthcare ecosystem, and I'm listing five. You can't have too many, otherwise they are no longer priorities. <laughs> they all have something in common, which is they help to connect and integrate the entire ecosystem. So number one, we need a national repository for patients' medical records. This was as what former minister Colum Wan said and his vision, one patient record. And this is the core objective of the NEHR, the National Electronic Health Record System, which supports that vision, one patient, one health record. With NEHR, now we have a central digital repository for all our patients' summary health records. It removes the need for patients who have to see multiple doctors to bring physical files from one clinic or one hospital to another. It solves the problem that when a patient is admitted to a hospital for an emergency, doctor go into the system and find I have no data of this patient. With NEHR, clinically relevant information will be built up with each encounter the patient has across healthcare providers and institutions in standard, easily accessible formats. Patients save time and money in avoiding duplicative tests clinical care will be improved. And today, NEHR is used by over 21,000 healthcare professionals and administrators every month. And to ensure that residents could access their healthcare records conveniently, IHIS developed the Health Hub app. Health Hub, I think we see it as a window to NEHR, through which, or rather a personal window, our personal window into NEHR, where we can peek into the system and look at our own records. So residents, you can securely, securely assess our own medical records and more. So today, two in three Singapore residents are using Health Hub. And about one million of us use it every month from managing our medical appointments, viewing health records, to ordering medication. I use it to plot my LDL. <laughs> I have several tests. Alas, recently, a friend told me she has, she may have high cholesterol, but could not remember the readings. I asked her, what's your reading? What's your LDL reading? She couldn't remember, so I said, let me see your blood test results in Health Hub. She showed me, went in, blank, nothing. And she said, oh, because I took my test at a private hospital. So we still have some way to go to fully integrate patients' data. And this will be resolved when and if we enact the Health Information Act next year. 
and having this national digital, digital repository of patients' medical record will be a very powerful change. Second priority, a system for remote healthcare. And I think what epitomizes it will be telehealth. Because as we place greater emphasis on primary care, this becomes an important capability. And telehealth is a key enabler. It means you can deliver care without having the patient physically in front of the clinician. The adoption of telehealth took off during the COVID-19 pandemic. Then we began to really appreciate how, how useful telehealth was. Patients could consult a doctor in their home, and especially those who were less mobile. It also helped ease the high patient load in our institutions. And it was a necessity at that time, because you don't want the patient with COVID to be running around spreading the virus. And so we say, no choice, compromise, do telehealth. But as a result, compromise became not a bad solution at all. So this necessity born out of a crisis promises to become a new norm. We are well placed to deliver telehealth, especially given how well Singapore has been wired up. Currently, almost all our public healthcare institutions use telehealth across many clinical specialties. But there's potential for us to expand its usage. This doesn't mean we expand the pipe. It means we require more work on the supporting functions surrounding telehealth. Let me explain. We will need to ensure that clinical standards are maintained whether care is delivered face-to-face -face or via telehealth. We need to decide on and apply our policies on child subsidies, Medisave, Pioneer, Medeca generation packages for telehealth. There needs to be a robust system of governance, regulation and enforcement in case there is any form of abuse because of telehealth. And since patients are not physically present at the clinic to collect their medication, there needs to be a national medication fulfillment system to work hand in hand with telehealth. And IHIS is working with ELPS, our national healthcare supply chain agency, to develop the National Central Field Pharmacy, NCFP. For institutions like polyclinics, the NCFP aims to centralize the fulfillment of medication off-site before it is delivered to the patients. So many things are delivered to us, to our homes. Some ridiculous things that we should just pop by the shop and get, or we order it online and get delivered to our homes. If so many things get delivered, what more medication it can be delivered? The National Harmonized Integrated Pharmacy Systems, NHIPS, is another major initiative by IHIS and our clusters. It aims to consolidate existing legacy systems into a single pharmacy system for harmonized medication dispensing. And it will, save, it will serve as a key enabler to NCFP, and NCFP will serve as a key enabler to telehealth. And telehealth is a key enabler to ensure that we can deliver care outside of clinics, outside of hospitals. So this will relieve workload at the polyclinic pharmacies and allow healthcare workers to focus on caring for patients. Our pharmacies dispense over 60 million medication items annually. Our goal is to use technology to centralize the workflow to fulfill 50% of the medication needs outside of hospitals, and then automatically manage orders from multiple sources for delivery to households nationwide. Third priority is a national billing system. We are quite some way away, but well, we have to start working on it. The current situation is that we have disparate billing systems across clusters, hospitals, public, private healthcare institutions. For the public sector, at least, we should aim for a unified billing system. Unifying it across private sector may be too much to ask for now. Let's do it for public sector. There are many advantages to our patients, such as a more consistent patient experience, and the way in which bills are presented to them, as well as greater transparency of costs and subsidies. 
There will be optimization of tech resources when our IT teams do not have to maintain such a fragmented landscape of so many legacy systems. And for the healthcare providers, there is a strategic benefit, or at least for the public sector, is that when there's a change to funding policy and financing policy, such as the level of subsidy, such as making sure our subsidy extend not just in clinics and hospitals in the public sector, but also out in the communities with the partners we work with, such as the use of MediSafe or MediShield Live, wherever you go when you receive care, such a unified system will enable adjustments to be made quickly and efficiently. It's a strategic capability. Fourth priority, undergirding all this, strong cyber and data security. As we harness the power of technology for healthcare, we must continue to be responsible for the security of our system and our data. IHIS, together with MOH, has established a multi-layered defense to protect our public healthcare systems and data assets, involving more than 200 cybersecurity initiatives, covering technical measures and process improvements. And we have seen a three-fold increase in the cybersecurity measures and capabilities over the last five years. For IHIS, data and cybersecurity has very much become part of its DNA. Our security design considerations are very much part of any development process. And we've got to keep it up and make it better. This area is not static. The threats are constantly heightening and evolving, and we have to keep on running. Constantly keep abreast of latest developments, never be complacent. Final priority is more looking into the future. There are many possibilities. Make that, make those possibilities, make exploring those possibilities part of your priority. And I believe healthcare is at the cusp of a technological revolution. For example, new diagnostic techniques coupled with wearables can usher in a new era of preventive and personal care. And another major area of future possibilities is in generative AI. Much has been talked about it, about generative AI, how it will threaten life as it is, how it will threaten all industries, get rid of, replace much manpower. But it is perhaps fortunate that with healthcare being such a high-touch sector, and being so tightly regulated, nothing can happen until regulators say yes. <laughs> Generative AI is not likely to replace manpower in a big way. I, I don't think so. Neither will it cause a major upheaval in the sector because it's so tightly regulated. In healthcare, we may have the space and time to thoughtfully deploy generative AI in a more deliberate, in a more systemic way to better care for our patients, improve our overall productivity, improve the effectiveness and competence of our healthcare workers. AI is actually already ubiquitous in healthcare. For example, pattern recognition technology that is used in medical imaging to recognize tumors. I mentioned earlier, healthcare apps that uses AI to nudge us to adopt good life habits, eating, exercising. With generative AI, like ChatGPT, there will be more possibilities. And today there are already applications where consultations between clinicians and patients, they may be speaking freely, but the app is recording it, transcribing it, synthesizing it, editing it into good English, in fact in many languages, and then uploading it as electronic medical record. Then at the output end, having so much records, clinicians can easily generate condensed patient information and track same medication use of the patient without having to plow through all the lengthy clinical notes. So all these will greatly improve productivity and change the way clinicians work today for the better. IHIS is hence working closely with industry partners to develop a secure GPT for healthcare professionals, and this is an exciting so with development. Okay. I've outlined five strategic priorities for IHIS. IHIS, 
I, I asked IHIS to do all this today, but you will no longer be called IHIS after today. <laughs> so I should say I've outlined IHIS's priorities. I have outlined the strategic priorities for IHIS and whatever you'll be called in future. <laughs> and today we are launching your new identity, a new logo with a new name called Synapse with an X. Many companies these days have an X. Huh? <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> uh, many of you will know synapses. These are the critical nodes for transmitting information between neurons throughout our body. Because only then can a human's consciousness through his or her brain direct the functioning of the rest of the body. That's what I found out from ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, synapse critical entity under MOH will ensure that patients' medical records, data, care, medication, healthcare subsidies and assistance, all these, like neurons of a human body, can transmit and flow seamlessly throughout the healthcare ecosystem. And when that happens, the entire nervous and sensory system of Singapore healthcare will be activated and operate as one. Care can be delivered in the community and at home. Residents with the support of the community and GPs can care for their own health. Seniors can better age gracefully in communities. We can all practice preventive care effectively. And acute hospitals continue to save lives and attend to complex cases in a more effective way. Healthcare workers will find that they have more tools to make their work better, to make them more effective. All these are possible, and Synapse is at the centre of developing those capabilities. So I want to thank IHIS for 15 years of service to public healthcare and to Singapore. Congratulations, and I look forward to your continued contributions as Synapse. Thank you. Thank you.